On this week's edition of History and Relics, we're going back more than 100 years to tell you a story and share with you some relics of a baseball player once touted as having the greatest catch, barehanded no less, in baseball history. No, we're not talking about Willie Mays' catch in 1954, nor any of Ernie Lombardi's barehanded catches that he did. No, we're going back much further than that, to the early 1900s in 19-teens, to an Ohio-born ball player named Josh DeVore, who also played in three World Series and served in World War I. So keep it right here. This episode is filled with terrific baseball history, little-known facts, and great baseball relics. Right here on History and Relics. DeVore was born in Murray City, Ohio on November 13, 1887, to Anthony and Louisa DeVore. Josh was raised a few miles away on a family farm in New Marshfield. DeVore played as much baseball as possible when he wasn't doing chores, and like many boys, he dreamed of a career in professional baseball. DeVore was in his mid-teens when he moved to Sealyville, Indiana, and worked in his older brother William's grocery store. His brother had seen an ad in the Terre Haute newspaper from a baseball club in Meridian, Mississippi, seeking a left-handed hitting outfielder. Joshua hit left and threw right, and had already reached his full adult size of 5'6 and 160 pounds. Guy Sample, Meridian's manager, thought DeVore was too small, but agreed to give him a chance after William put up a $100 cash guarantee that his brother would make good. He soon became a star player in the local industrial semi-pro league. His swiftness on the bases and in the field earned him the nickname the Sealyville Speed Demon. For two seasons, he was the best outfielder in the Cotton States League. It wasn't long before the majors would come calling. His major league debut came on September 25, 1908 with the New York Giants, managed by John McGraw. He was a utility outfielder during 1909, but excelled in 1910 by hitting 304 and stealing 43 bases. In the offseason, he lived in Terre Haute looking after a boxing club he founded in Fontenet. Josh's career embraced three World Series, two as a hero from McGraw's Giants, a National League dynasty. In 1911, the Giants won the pennant with DeVore hitting 280 and drawing 81 base on balls, stealing 61 bases, and finishing 22nd overall in the most valuable player balloting. His walk-off hit in Game 1 of the World Series gave the immortal Christy Mathewson a 2-1 victory over the Philadelphia A's. Then, in Game 5, DeVore's ninth inning double tied the game, allowing the Giants to win 4-3 in extra innings. From there, he was baseball royalty and touted by the Terre Haute Press as Sir Joshua DeVore. Though he fanned only 43 times the entire season, DeVore's record of eight strikeouts in the 1911 World Series still stands. DeVore hit 275 in 1912, saving his best for last. On June 20, 1912, Josh stole four bases in one inning against Boston, which is still a National League mark. But you can ask any baseball aficionado to identify the greatest catch in World Series history, and you can be assured that he or she will refer to Willie Mays' memorable over-the-shoulder catch of Rick Wirtz's line drive in Game 1 of the 1954 postseason playoff. The catch, as it's described in baseball's encyclopedia, is considered one of the most notable defensive gems in baseball history. It was spectacular, but even Mays has been quoted as saying that he didn't think it was the best catch he ever made. 
DeVore, like Mays, an outfielder for the New York Giants, made a spectacular bare-handed catch, no less, with two on and two out in the bottom of the ninth in Game 3 of the 1912 World Series in Boston's Fenway Park. While no film is available to compare the accomplished feat, we must rely on words. A New York Times reporter wrote under the sports headline, Divorce Snatches Victory in the Ninth. Divorce catch was called the greatest catch in World Series history, and for 42 years it held that distinction until Willie Mays' catch on September 29, 1954. As for the winners of the 1912 World Series, it was the Boston Red Sox over the New York Giants four games to three, with one tie being in game two. This was one of only four World Series to go eight games, and the only best of seven series to do so. While the 1912 series was extended to eight games due to a tie being called on account of darkness, the 1903, 1919, and 1921 World Series were all best of nine affairs that happened to run eight games. Despite his heroics, the Giants traded Josh to Cincinnati in 1913, and after just 66 games, the Reds sent him to the Phillies, where he hit 282. While hitting 304 in Philadelphia, he was traded to the Boston Braves and helped the Miracle Braves of 1914 win the World Series, sweeping the Athletics four games to nothing. DeVore left Major League Baseball in 1915 to become part owner and player manager of the Chillicothe Babes of the Ohio State League. There he hit 306. He played for Topeka in Milwaukee in 1916 and Joplin in 1917. DeVore then enlisted in the Army in 1918 and fought in World War I. He didn't play organized baseball until jumping back into the American Association in 1919, hitting 310 for Indianapolis. In 1920, he started the first of five consecutive years with Grand Rapids in Michigan. In 1925, DeVore returned to Chillicothe where he managed restaurants and lunchrooms as well as worked as a grocer, the same job he had when he started his baseball career. He lived in Chillicothe for the rest of his life. It's not clear whether or not DeVore played any organized baseball after departing Grand Rapids. Many major and minor league players joined barnstorming teams after their professional career to earn extra money. Others may have played exhibition games or participated as guests or fill-ins for other players who may have been out. But one thing is for sure, we have a post-career, game-used Louisville Slugger bat of Josh DeVores that dates to the 1925-1928 era. Based on player characteristics and other game use factors as determined by John Tobby of PSA Authentication Services, this fits the bill as being used by DeVore during the reference period. It measures in at 35.375 inches, weighs 36.7 ounces, and is made of ash. It has a severely cracked handle that's been repaired with nails, as common back in the day. A truly great piece of American baseball history right here. DeVore died on October 6, 1954, a month before his 67th birthday, and one week after Willie Mays made his famous World Series catch. Josh left behind his wife Catherine and one daughter, Patricia. He's buried with other family members at the New Marshfield Cemetery in New Marshfield, Ohio. His obituary was on the front page of the Chillicothe Gazette, which called DeVore the greatest ball player in the town's history. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID History and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.